Welcome back to the Coaching Masters podcast. It's always really funny when I say that to everybody that's watching this live because I've just had like a decent 15 minute chat with all of the live viewers of this podcast inside of Coaching Mastery for online coaches, the number one course, number one course, number one group in the world for online coaches, completely free group, completely free community. Uh, a community that we just add value. And this is where I indeed record every single episode of the Coaching Masters podcast completely live inside of this group to a select few live viewers. And if you want to be one of those viewers, make sure that you join the Facebook group. Go on Facebook, go to the search bar, type in Coaching Mastery for online coaches, and you will indeed see the group and you can join the group. And, uh, and why would you want to do that? Well, one of the reasons why you'd want to do that is because then you can watch me record the Coaching Masters podcast completely live every single week. And you get to listen to the episode before the episode actually is released on iTunes and Spotify. But today we're going to be talking about something very, 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 very close to my heart because it was a huge part of my coaching journey. Now, there's a few reasons why you would be watching uh, a, a live like this, and there's a few reasons why you would be listening to the Coaching Masters podcast. And that is because in one way, shape, or form, you have an interest in coaching, right? You have an interest in coaching. Now, there may be various different reasons as to why you have an interest in coaching. Maybe you want to become a coach, right? Maybe you want to become a full-time coach, quit your nine to five, do something more fulfilling, do something that's going to genuinely help people and do something that you can run from your laptop. Because of course, all coaching sessions nowadays are delivered via Zoom. Maybe there are those people that want to become a coach just to improve what it is they currently do. Maybe you don't want to quit the nine to five. Maybe you don't want to quit your job. Maybe you enjoy what it is you do. And you know what? What you want to do is you want to utilize coaching skills and tools and techniques and ideas and methods and questions just simply to improve your current job or your current existence. And then there's the third type of person that loves the idea of becoming a coach simply for their own personal development, right? Just to improve their own mindset, to shift their perspective, to increase their confidence, to break down their limiting beliefs. And what better way of being able to do that than actually learning the skills of a coach and becoming a coach yourself, because then you can coach yourself, right? So regardless of the reason as to why you're listening to this podcast, what I always want to be doing is I always want to be giving you an insight into my own journey, having gone from actor and then my acting career not working out, having to get a job. And I went from one dead end job to another to another, became a postman or a mailman for our friends in the US, a full time postman. And uh, it was when I was a full time postman. That I actually started listening to podcasts uh, about coaching and mindset and personal development, and I was inspired to become a coach. And I quit that job and I became a coach. But there's always that part of the journey that I don't talk about that much, right? Which was the part of the journey before I became the postman. And this part of my journey means a lot to me. The part of my journey where I was an actor, this really truly means a lot to me. This was a huge, mo very significant part of my life. you know, It was one of the most exciting parts of my life. It was one of the most eye-opening parts of my life. I learned a ton about the human mind, about the human existence as an actor. And it was only when I really became a coach that I realized just how much I was learning about coaching when I was an actor. Now, big shout out to my actor friends who listen to this podcast. I know that there are a few of you that reach out to me and you say, look, I love the podcast, Liam. I listen to it every week. And, uh, and big shout out to you guys, right? And, um, and I love you. You're amazing. You're incredible actors. And what I want to be able to do today is give you guys even a little bit of an insight into how coaching would absolutely be a very, very, very excellent, um, excellent opportunity for you to do alongside acting, which is, you know, it really, really is. And even though I had quit acting and I'd become a postman and then I'd uh, started a coaching business, there are no doubts. There are no doubts whatsoever that my coaching business would work very well alongside being an actor. Very, very, very well. And the reasons are because I have a lot of freedom now. I have the freedom to choose when I work, how I work, where I work. All of my stuff is delivered online. One of the biggest killers of, uh, of actors, right, is that when I say killers of actors, I don't mean literally like someone actually killing them. 
I mean, one of the biggest reasons as to why a lot of people quit acting is because they can no longer make it to auditions. And the reason why they can't get to auditions is because they have to work a nine to five. And of course, all auditions, everybody will tell you this and that, that knows this, all auditions happen within the hours of nine to five, Monday to Friday, right? Fucking, it just is the way it is. You know, a casting director is not going to audition you at 11 o'clock on, you know, 11 p.m. on a Saturday. It's nine to five, Monday to Friday. So basically, if you can't make it to that audition and you don't have a lot of flexibility with what it is you do for work and a day job, you're not going to be you're not going to become an actor. So anyway, it works very, very well alongside what it is I do and what it is other coaches do, because we get the freedom to choose when we have our coaching session. So like, if I did have any auditions anymore, I would be able to go to them whenever I want, right? So anyway, what we're talking about today is what I learned about coaching when I was an actor. And I'm going to introduce you to this one book, right? Now, this book was my Bible when I was an actor. Now, the book is called The Complete Stanislavski Toolkit, right? Now, that's a, that's a mouthful, isn't it? Stanislavski, okay? That's his name, Konstantin Stanislavski. So basically, why am I talking to you about the complete Stanislavski toolkit? Well, this is a book for actors, okay? It's written by Bella Merlin. It's a book for actors. And what it focuses on is it focuses on the acting techniques and teachings of one of the greatest acting tutors and teachers throughout history. That was an acting teacher called Konstantin Stanislavski, who existed, I believe, in around the 1920s. Now, Stanislavski, or let's just call him Constantine from this point forward, because Stanislavski is too much of a mouthful. Constantine, he created an acting method which allowed actors to truly, fully step into the person that they want to become and focusing on their objectives. What do they want to achieve? Their hurdles, what challenges and hurdles are standing in front of them? How do they breathe and how can they bring relaxation into their body as they breathe? What is their level of confidence inside of this scene whilst they're speaking to these other characters in this one particular environment, right? So already just having said that, now think about that for a moment. Objectives, what is it that you want? Hurdles, what's standing in your way? What is your confidence level inside of this scene? What is the relationship that you have with the other people inside of this scene? Can you or can you not already see the correlation between acting and coaching? Already, can you already see, even just with that, those few select things that a good actor needs to focus on, can you see the correlation between acting and good coaching? What's your objective? What is it that you're trying to achieve? What are your challenges and hurdles that are standing in front of you, stopping you from achieving what you want to achieve? What level of confidence do you currently have and what current level of confidence do you need inside of this environment? What is your relationship with the other people inside of this environment? How can they help you get what it is you want? Just think about this for a moment. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to dive a lot deeper into this. But there is a huge correlation between what a good actor needs to know and what a good actor needs to focus on and also what a good coach needs to focus on to help their client move forward to achieve the things they want to achieve, right? So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This is going to be a little bit different, this podcast episode. I'm going to randomly just skim through this book, right? Because this book, honestly, for actors, I mean, this is honestly a Bible. I'm going to skim through this book and I'm going to touch on some of the things that the great acting teacher, Konstantin Stanislavski, teaches his actors. And what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the correlation between that and being a good coach. OK, the first thing I came across now, as you can see, I'm only I've only gone like a few pages into the book. Right, We're on page 19, page 19 out of 324 pages. And this section is called The Art of Listening. Listening, active listening. Is it or is it not a very, very, very important part of the coaching journey when you are a coach? Now, let me save you the time. Absolutely, yes, it is. All good coaches need to be active listeners. They need to understand, as it says here in Konstantin Stanislavski's book, they need to understand the art of listening. Now, why is the art of listening very, very, very important for a coach 
it's important for a coach because we need to genuinely understand the viewpoints and the feelings and the emotions and the perspective of our clients. We have to understand that viewpoint. And we can't understand that viewpoint if we're listening to our client whilst waiting for our turn to speak. We cannot achieve true, tremendous coaching if we are listening to our client and only thinking about what it is we are going to say next. We need to be listening to our client completely openly, completely actively, only with the intention of understanding them, not planning what we're going to say next, not thinking about what we're going to have for dinner, not thinking about what technique we're going to do next, but just openly listening. Now, why is that also important for an actor? Why is there a section inside of this book called active listening or the art of listening? And that is because great actors genuinely listen to what the other character is saying. Now, think about this for a moment. As an actor, you know the scene, you know the script, you know the words, you know what you are supposed to say, you know what they're going to say as a response, you also know what you're going to say as a response to that, you then know what's going to happen next, you know who's about to walk in, you know all of that stuff, right? As an actor, you know all of that stuff. But great actors learn that script so well, inside out, upside down, they learn that script so efficiently that they have the ability to forget about it. They have the ability to not think about it. So even though they know the script really well, the ability to be able to forget about the script means that what they're able to do is simply listen to what the other character is saying. And not listening and thinking, what's my next line? What's my next line? What am I going to say? But listening to them whilst genuinely understanding what it is they're saying, how they're saying it. So a good actor can then simply respond with the appropriate response. They can respond honestly, authentically, and naturally. And it's those responses that when you watch your favorite actors in your favorite movies or in in theater, And they're so good and they're so genuine is because they are genuinely responding to what's being given to them, right? They're genuinely listening. Again, let's relate this to coaching. The best coaches in the world, they know the techniques inside out, upside down. They know the the, the steps. Now, don't forget as well, unlike a a script, you don't need to memorize the steps, right, of of a technique. It's more you, you can have them in front of you as you deliver a technique. But what I mean is we know the techniques as in if somebody was to say something to me, if my client was to tell me something and I'm going to genuinely listen to them, if I genuinely hear a limiting belief, I know that the technique that they then need is a breaking down of a limiting belief technique. If I'm listening to them, actively listening to them, and I genuinely hear a lack of confidence, I know that what technique we need to move on next is a confidence building technique. So you see where I'm going with this, right? Good coaches, they understand the techniques. They know the techniques. They know the power of the techniques. They know all of that stuff. But what they then do is they don't step into a coaching session thinking, right, today, these are the techniques that I'm going to do and pre-planning it. Because that would be the equivalent of an actor pre-planning how they're going to respond to another character's line. The best actors in the world don't pre-plan how they're going to respond to another actor's line because they don't know what the other actor is going to give them. They don't know how that other actor is going to deliver that line, right? They know what the line is, but they don't know how the other actor is going to deliver the line because the other actor is delivering lines through inspiration and intuition. It could be different every time. So a good actor listens to the line and responds appropriately. A good coach listens to their client and they respond appropriately, right? So already just on page 19, there's another direct correlation between acting and also coaching as well, right? Next one that we come across, relaxation. Relaxation as an actor is a really, really, really big part of the acting process. Why is relaxation a big part of the acting process? Relaxation is a huge part of the acting process because we can only ever allow inspiration 
and intuition to come to the forefront of our actions and our words if we're feeling relaxed and we're feeling unrestricted. When we're not relaxed and we feel tense and we feel stressed, what we're doing is we are restricting ourselves. We're tightening up and we're becoming physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually restricted. Now, one thing that I really, really want to say is when we are stressed, when we are tense, when we are restricted, I would like you to imagine a pipe, right? Imagine a pipe. And when a pipe is unrestricted, water can flow through that pipe effortlessly, right? Water can flow through the pipe. That water is inspiration, ideas, intuition. When we get stressed and when we get tense, that pipe then bends and it becomes restricted, right? When the pipe bends, the water can no longer flow through the pipe. The inspiration, the ideas, the intuition, it can no longer flow through the pipe because that pipe has become restricted. As a coach and indeed as a client, if we bring an element of tension to the coaching session, right, then we are restricting our ability to listen, to respond. We're restricting our ability to be able to feel inspired, to have intuition, to know what to say at what time to be able to help our clients. If our clients are coming to a coaching session restricted, which often they will because they're stepping into that session after a stressful day, or maybe because of the reason as to why they want their coaching session, maybe they have having trouble with their relationship or they're unfulfilled at work, or they're feeling a lack of confidence. It's not unusual for our clients to enter a coaching session feeling restricted. Now, we don't want to continue the session with that sense and that sensibility and that feeling because we're going to be trying to create intuition when the intuition cannot flow because the pipe has been restricted. So if you feel a level of tension when you enter a coaching session, there is one very, very simple, very easy way to be able to ease the tension, ease that pipe, and allow intuition and ideas to flow once again. Five deep breaths. And it really is as simple as that. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. If you're feeling that there is a sense of tension that your client has brought to the session, or there's a sense of tension that you've brought to the session, what I want you to do is I want you to be brave enough to say to your client, before we begin, Me and you together, we're going to take five deep breaths and take your time with it as well. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Breathe in. And you do it five times. Now, when you take those five deep breaths with the slight hold either side, It allows you and your client to slightly relax. Now, guess where else that is done? Good actors do that. Before they step out on stage, before they step out in front of the camera, they need to be loose. Even if they're playing a character who is feeling very stressed and feeling very tense and mid-argument, they need their inspiration and their intuition to be able to flow because the best actors in the world, the best actors in the world, they respond in the moment, right? So even if their character is very stressed and their character is very angry, they need to be able to do that in a relaxed state because they need to be able to feel the intuition and be inspired by the scene that is unfolding. And you can only really do that when you're relaxed. Great actors also take those five breaths before they step out on stage. So once again, there is a direct correlation between acting and coaching. A good coach will allow their client to take those five breaths and a good actor will take those five breaths. The next section is actually called breathing, right? So of course, that's uh, directly related to that as well. Now, the next section, I mean, honestly, guys, I'm not gonna be able to go through the entire book, but fuck me, seriously. When I reread this book, right, the complete Stanislavski toolkit for those people that are listening to this on the podcast that would like to Google it, even buy yourself a copy. As a coach, right, honestly, as a coach, I recommend people buy this book. I swear to God, even if you've got no interest in being an actor, I recommend you buy this book because the the correlations between this and coaching are just mind blowing. I'm not even going to be able to get through the whole book on today's episode, but I just really want to introduce you to some of the things that I learned about coaching whilst being an actor. 
One of them, the next section is concentration and attention. Concentration and attention. Now, when it comes to being an actor, the concentration and attention section within this book is all about what it is you're focused on. Okay. What is holding your attention and what are you concentrating on? Now, as an actor, there's this very, very, very interesting technique, and it's called circles of attention. And the way that circles of attention works when you're an actor is that when you're standing up on stage, you decide, and it's the same for being on screen as well, but let's just use stage as an, as an example. When you're standing up on stage, you decide where your circles of attention are, right? So let me give you an example. Your biggest circle of attention would be the entire stage and everything inside of that stage. So let's imagine for a moment that on stage, the, the stage is a, a, is a restaurant, right? Is a restaurant. Now, your biggest circle of attention is going to be everything inside of that restaurant. Now, if you imagine for a moment as an actor, if you're focused on everything that's happening inside of that restaurant, then naturally you're going to be focused on things that are far away from you, things that are in the distance and things that you're not directly connected to, but they are holding your attention. Then what you can do is you can bring your circle of attention slightly downwards and bring it inwards a little bit. And maybe now your attention is only on the immediate five tables that are around you. So you're paying a lot more attention now to the people that are only sitting on the five tables near you. They're closer to you. They're in closer proximity. They are more connected to you in that instance. But then what you can do is you can bring your circle of attention down even further. And so now your circle of attention is only on the people sitting at your table. So now, of course, you're concentrating on something a lot closer to you, right? A lot more meaningful to you. And then you can bring your circle of attention all the way down to just focusing on you. Just focusing on yourself, not focusing on any other characters, not focusing on the restaurant, not focusing on what's going on around you, not focusing on the environment, focusing on nothing but what you're doing and what you're thinking, right? The reason that actors do this is because it brings a very, very interesting level of mystique, right? What is that character thinking about? What are they focused on? The character number one might have a huge circle of attention and you might be thinking, why are they so concerned with that waiter who's standing at the other side of the restaurant? Actor number two, their circle of attention may just be inside of their own mind. And you're thinking, why is that character so focused on themselves? Now, again, let's relate this to coaching. What happens when our clients don't realize where their circle of attention is? Okay. Now, as human beings, we have circles of attention in the same way that actors have circles of attention. Am I or am I not correct when I say there are times where we're very, very focused on what's going on in the world around us, right? We're more focused on other people, what other people are doing, what other people are saying. We're focused on the fact that Michael got that really good job and I'm feeling very, very jealous because I think he's more successful than me. We're focused on that person who's speaking to your partner and should I be worried about that? Is that a threat? We're focused on all of these people outside of ourselves. And then we can have times where we are solely focused on what's going on inside of our own minds. And we're neglecting what's happening outside of ourselves. We're not really listening to our partner. We're not really listening to that person at work. We're not really listening uh, or we're not even engaging with the people that are sitting around the table. And we're focused inwards on how we're thinking and how we're feeling and that worry that we have or that excitement that we have. So human beings have circles of attention. The reason why that acting technique is gold dust for you as a coach is because when you introduce your client to the idea that their current attention is at a certain level, right? What we can then do is we can alter it. Because if we have a client whose attention is always outside of themselves, if we have a client whose attention is always focused on other people and what they're doing and how they're more successful and how they look more fulfilled, and actually they're not giving themselves enough attention, we can bring their circle of attention right down from the external, which is other people, and bring it all the way down to the internal, which is themselves. That idea is a lot easier to process when you tell them about the whole acting technique thing, circles of attention, and say to them, you know what, say to your client, at the moment, your circle of attention is all the way out here. 
And what I would like you to do is I would like you to bring it inwards and inwards and inwards. And maybe you just bring it into focusing on the people in their life, their immediate life, their loved ones, their kids, their, their, their partner. Because maybe those people in their life, they're not getting enough attention because that client's circle of attention is way out here and they're focusing on strangers on Instagram. Or you might want to bring their circle of attention all the way inwards and say, let's focus on you. But what about you? How are you feeling? What are you thinking? What do you need to do to achieve what it is you want? Then, of course, we have the vice versa where there are clients that are so focused inwards on themselves that we need to bring their circle of attention outwards and get them to start to focus on the people around them and their environment, environment around them. Connection and attention, right? Circles of attention. Once again, direct correlation between acting and coaching, right? Next one, inspiration. Inspiration. Now, as a coach and as an actor even, inspiration is extremely important, right? All great actors will tell you that they hope for inspiration, right? It's what they hope for. It's what they pray for. They want inspiration. They want to be inspired in the moment so that they're able to react in a very, very authentic way or say something or do something that is truthful. So it's not fake. It's not false. A lot of people think good acting, good actors are the ones that are able to pretend to the highest level or highest skill. It's not true, right? It's not true. Great actors don't pretend. As far as they're concerned, they're not pretending, right? As far as they're concerned, they're being utterly truthful. And what they're saying, they believe. They believe what they're saying, right? And what they're doing, they believe what they're doing. But you're only really able to do that if you find inspiration, right? If you're open to inspiration, if you let inspiration find its way to you. Now, it's the same with coaching again. What do we hope for during a coaching session? We hope for that level of inspiration where we know what technique that person needs, right? We know what question that we need to ask next. We want that burst of inspiration and it's the same as being in flow. You know, a lot of people talk about being in flow, right? And when you're in flow, you feel superhuman. You feel like things are effortless. You feel like you could juggle 10 things at once and you're having fun with it. And it's almost like a dance. You know, everybody has found themselves in flow at one stage in their lives. And that flow comes from a burst of inspiration. You're inspired by something or someone or something and you feel the inspiration. Actors wish for that and they hope it arrives. And coaches wish for that also and they hope it arrives. And clients wish for it. They want to feel a burst of inspiration so that they know exactly what it is they need to do to break down that limiting belief or change that bad relationship or find fulfillment in their job. They want that burst of inspiration also. And you can learn a lot about inspiration through Stanislavski's techniques. You really, really can. So find another section that works well, looking for that correlation between acting and coaching. There's one here. And it's called given circumstances, given circumstances. Now, given circumstances in the world of acting, what that essentially means is what you have been given inside of that scene. The given circumstances of a scene are, where are we? What time is it? Who else is involved? What's my relationship with those other people? What is it that I want? What am I trying to achieve? What am I wearing? How old am I? How knowledgeable am I about what it is we're talking about? Essentially, as an actor, you need to answer a whole series of questions where you think to yourself, right, at this scene I've been given, what are the given circumstances? The writer has given me a set of circumstances. I need to understand what they are in order to have the best possible opportunity to get what it is I want, right? That's huge. That's huge. And it's directly relatable once again to coaching because what situation do our clients find themselves in? They find themselves within a situation of given circumstances. They're going to have a situation in which they're feeling negative emotions that they don't want to feel, right? Our clients have been given a set of given circumstances in their life. When they approach you for coaching sessions, of course, something isn't working, right? They're unfulfilled in their job. They've got a bad relationship. They've got a bad connection with their parents. They're feeling a lack of confidence. They can't speak up and at work. They want to start their own business, whatever, right? They can't sleep. 
They want some coaching around parenting. Whatever it is that that person has decided that they want coaching on, there is a certain set of given circumstances right, around that situation. In those situations where they're unhappy and unfulfilled, there's going to be a particular time of day where that's a problem. There's going to be a particular place where that's a problem. There's going to be particular people that are involved that create and contribute towards that problem. There's going to be a certain level of knowledge that they don't have. There's going to be a certain level of skill that they don't have. There's going to be a certain thought process that they've got, which is creating the problem. The key with this is just really understanding that when our clients approach us with problems, issues, challenges, hurdles, whatever you want to call them, right? When our clients approach us with these things, we don't often take the time to think about the context right, around what's creating the problem. We don't often take the time to think about the given circumstances of the situation. What we tend to do is we tend to just focus on the problem itself, right? With the hopes that we will be able to somehow solve the problem, like, solve, like answer the question, answer the question to the problem. You know what I'm trying to say? We, we tend to focus on the problem that we, in the hopes that we can fix it. But one very, very good way of being able to take that problem and turn it into something more empowering and more positive is by understanding the given circumstances surrounding the problem. Well, when you experience this, where are you? Who are you with? What time of day is it? What thought process do you have? What skill set do you need to develop to overcome the problem? Where do you need to go to overcome the problem? What needs to change within that those circumstances to help you overcome the problem? Again, directly related to actors, because actors receive a scene, but the only difference with that is that they receive a scene in which case they cannot change the given circumstances. The given circumstances have been written for them, and that's that. They need to work within it. The good thing about working with clients is that they don't necessarily need to accept their given circumstances. Some, I warrant, will be more difficult to change, right? Of course, as is always the way. But we are not slaves to given circumstances. We do not need to just let, roll over and expose our vulnerable underbelly to the given circumstances. We can change where we are, where we go, who we're with, our level of knowledge, our thought process, our level of confidence, what we're wearing, who we're speaking to. We do not live by a set script like actors do. We can change the circumstances, right? So anyway, it's another big one. Find another one. Right. This one is absolutely huge. The correlation between this, between this acting idea and coaching could not be stronger. Okay. It could not be stronger. Stan Lasky created the idea of objectives and counter objectives. Right. Now, let me introduce you to this because this really is like, the creme de la creme of acting, but it's also the creme de la creme of good coaching as well, right? It really, really, really is. So within the world of acting, objectives and super objectives, right? Let me break this down. A super objective is what your character wants for their entire life, right? Not just what they want inside of that scene. It's what they want as a person, right? It's what they want to achieve, what they need to get, what they need to claim, what they need to create, what it is they want in the big picture of their entire lives. The reason why they teach this when you're an actor is because if you only focus on what it is you want in that particular moment, you're not really a fully complete person because we as human beings, there's always something that we want overall, right, for our whole lives. And then the objective is what you want just inside of that scene. Because, of course, the scene itself is like a mini story, right? There's something that's happening inside of the scene that drives the full story forward. So you need to know as an actor what your objective is inside of that scene. So let me just give you a real life example, okay? So let me, let me just use a real life example of me right now. My super objective is to create a business that is so successful, the coaching masters, and have investments that are so successful that I am able to make as much money as I want 
without having to work very hard for it so that I can spend all of my time and all of my days with my family, right? Doing the things we want to do, traveling, going on holiday, going on adventures, doing exciting things, engaging in things that we're passionate about without having to worry about how am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to pay the bills? For me personally, as an individual, that is my super objective. My super objective is to make enough money so that I am able to spend every day with my family doing what I want when I want, right? Now, think about my objective. If this was a scene, right? This is a very, very small but specific part of my life. Right now, I'm delivering a podcast slash live training for part of my community. So my current objective is to deliver this podcast episode with enough energy and excitement and electricity and good information that this is going to be valuable to all of the people that are watching me and listening to me, right? That's my current objective. So my super objective as a human is to have a very successful business and very successful investments so I can spend all my time with my family. My current objective in the moment, in this current scene, is just to deliver this podcast episode with enough energy and good information that it's valuable to the people, right? So think about this for a moment. When it comes to your clients, they also have a super objective and an objective. They are going to have something that they want to achieve overall for their entire lives. And they're also going to have something that they want to achieve in the moment, right here, right now, as they're struggling with their current hurdles and problems. The reason why it's really powerful to think about that is because we can get so caught up in the current immediate objective that we fail to realize that our current immediate objective should always be contributing towards the bigger super objective. Always. Because if our current immediate objective isn't directly contributing towards the bigger overall super objective of our lives, then it's pretty much useless, right? It means that we're going to be doing things moment by moment that don't actually help us, okay? So what we want to be doing with our clients is we want to be introducing them to the fact that they have a super objective. We want to be introducing them to the fact that they have an overall goal that they want to achieve for their lives. And then we want to get them focused on the fact that their immediate smaller objective in the moment should only ever contribute towards that. Otherwise, they're going to be moving backwards. Exactly the same as good actors do with their scene. Then, just to slap a little bit more realism on top, there are counter objectives. Now, what is a counter objective? A counter objective is the objective that the other people around you, what they want and how it conflicts with what it is you want. Now, let's stop for a moment and think about this. That's life, right? That's life. Even though there are always going to be those people that help us achieve what it is we want and help us achieve our objectives, there are also going to be those people, places, situations, things, events. There are going to be those life events that also act as a counter objective and stand in our way and stop us from getting the things that we want. So, why is this important as an actor? Well, it's important as an actor because we're not, even though a good actor is going to be focused on what it is they want, they're also going to be very aware that there are situations unfolding within that scene that are stopping them from getting what they want. And we have to be aware of that because if we're all aware of the things that are stopping us from getting what we want, we need to give those things a slightly different level of attention because they become challenges, they become hurdles, they become problems. And we need to know how to maneuver around the problem. Amazing actors are very aware of their character's super objective, their character's objective, and the counter objectives that are happening inside of that scene. Awesome coaches bring their clients' awareness to the fact that their clients have a super objective, have an objective, and we recognize there are counter objectives happening all the time throughout their life. They need to be aware of that because if they're not aware of that, they're walking through the dark, bumping into the chairs and the tables blindly, right? With a complete lack of clarity. 
How often do we do this in our own lives in general, right? How often do we do this where we have a lack of clarity? We don't really know what it is we want. We don't really know why we want it. We don't really understand that what we want in the immediate moment might not contribute to what we want overall in our life. We don't really recognize and appreciate that there are counter objectives, that there are problems standing in our way, that there are challenges unfolding. We try to avoid them, right? We do this often, right? We do this often. We absolutely do. Jim Lutz, straight in there. Often, right? Often. It's very, very true. And that is one of the most powerful elements of coaching is bringing that level of clarity and awareness to our clients and also to ourselves in our own lives and saying, right, we're no longer just going to wander around in the dark. We're no longer just going to guess, right, and improvise. We are going to get clarity. We are going to make a firm decision. What is my super objective? What is that number one thing that I want to achieve overall for my entire life? And then moment by moment, day by day, waking up and asking the question, what is today's objective? If you think about your whole day as almost like one huge scene as an actor, you wake up and you think, what is today's objective? And you know what? The objective throughout the day may change. And as long as you're aware of that, that's okay. But one of the worst things is not having the objective, waking up and just saying, well, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Don't get me wrong, right? There are times, right? The surrender experiment, untethered soul, all of that. There's fucking, there's a lot of value in there, right? In terms of going with the flow and seeing what happens. But the thing is, when you go with the flow forever, right? You inevitably end up somewhere that you didn't want to be, that you didn't plan for, that you're not ready for, and you don't know where the fuck you are, right? Going with the flow in bursts is absolute. There's a lot of value in that. There's excitement in that. There's adventure in that. And you'll find yourself in magical places you never, you never would have dreamed of before. But again, you know, it's like the idea of um, what's it called? Um, Tao Chi, I think they call it. It's like that idea of extremities. Two extremities will always get you the same shitty result. You know, if you if you're at two ends of an extreme, let's use relationships, for example, right? In a relationship, if you're extremely clingy, the relationship will end. Or if you're extremely distant, the relationship will end, right? Both of those extremes have the same result that you don't want. So what we want to be doing is we don't want to be going with the flow to an absolute extreme. And we don't want to be rigorously planning every moment of every day to an absolute extreme. We want like a happy medium. And a happy medium is simply lies with understanding that each day there is an objective. And knowing what that objective is, because if you don't know what the objective is, you just, you, just, you just walk around in the dark bumping into things. Also having the awareness that there will always be counter objectives. There will always be things that stand in your way. People, places, things, events, situations. There will always be things trying to stop you from getting what it is you want to get. And as long as we're aware of that, we prepare ourselves to maneuver our way through that. How valuable is that to give to your client? The understanding, that one simple actor's technique of having a super an objective and counter objective, just the one simple idea of that, giving that to your client and bringing their level of awareness to that. So anyway, guys, I, I literally touched on a very, very teeny, tiny section of this book. I'm talking teeny, tiny. It's quite a thick book. It's like 350 pages. It's absolute gold dust for any actors that are watching. But also as a coach as well, I I mean, I recommend you get your hands on a copy because there's some real wisdom in there in terms of how you can relay this to your client. So this has been what I learned uh, about coaching as an actor, only a tiny little sliver of it. I hope it's been helpful. I love you all. You're amazing. Keep driving forward. This could be your reality. Coach your way to freedom. I love you so much. You're amazing. And, uh, And I'll see all of you coaching masters inside of the Coaching Masters community very, very shortly. 